Hello team and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we are going to discuss about Argo CD masterclass and in that we are going to completely understand Argo CD set it up and also do a hands-on implementation for deployment of an application. Okay. So as you remember from the beginning I have always said that any tool that exists in DevOps it exists because it solves a problem. Right. Similarly Argo CD also exists because it is solving a problem. So now first let us understand what is the problem statement, right? Okay. So, you know, generally when we are using uh, Jenkins uh, for CI CD pipeline, so what are the stages that we have, right? First, we are going to have a like stage of like compile. Then we are going to have test. Then we are going to have scanning of like a file system, right? Or dependency check. Then we have building of our application to get the executable file. Then we have building of Docker images and pushing of Docker images, right? Till here, basically what we are doing, till here we are doing CI, continuous integration, right? After that, what happens? After that, we are going to like uh, uh, update the YAML manifest files, right? Because these are the um, uh, YAML files that are used for deployment of the application right and once the uh, manif uh, manifest files is updated then what we do using jenkins we deploy the application to kubernetes right and this is like cd part right now you uh, you might be thinking okay this is simple like uh, yeah generally we do this right where is the problem so the problem right so problem is basically first of all if you want to use jenkins to do the deployment of the application what are the things that we need to have first we need to install kubectl on jenkins right because in jenkins itself we need to run the commands like kubectl apply hyphen f then the yaml file name right so that is the first thing we need to separately install kubectl on jenkins secondly we need to configure jenkins configure jenkins so that it can connect to kubernetes cluster right also we need to provide credentials in order for jenkins to connect to kubernetes cluster we need to provide the credentials from kubernetes cluster to jenkins right and let's say and let's assume that our kubernetes cluster is running on some cloud platform cloud platform like eks and we want to deploy our application uh, from Jenkins to Ikea. So in that case, what we need to do first, we need to make sure from uh, like uh, Jenkins, we have access to cloud, right? First thing we need to do. Then again, we need to make sure that uh, from Jenkins, we have access to uh, cloud uh, Kubernetes cluster, right? So it from these things you can see ki additional so many tasks we need to do we need to install separate tools we need to configure jenkins like obviously if you want to configure jenkins to connect to kubernetes cluster we need to install several plugins like kubernetes plugin kubernetes cli plugin right we need to provide credentials to jenkins correct so these are like some extra task right and also like it's like so many different third party tools we are installing kubectl separately we need to install and if you want to connect to cloud platform like AWS, we need to install AWS CLI also so Jenkins can connect to cloud platform, right? So these are so many challenges and some of them are like actually security challenge also. You can understand this ki if separately we, in order to like deploy from Jenkins to Kubernetes, if we need to configure so many different things, it's like obviously it's, it's like challenge, right? And separately, if you're configuring credentials to Kubernetes, credentials to cloud platform, so those are those will be considered as a security challenge because like providing credentials is not very easy thing. Okay. So these are some things that we have. Okay. So general uh, deployment flow, if we can uh, understand from this diagram. So we can say key, uh, we have Jenkins, right? Let's say key, and this is a cloud platform. Okay. And we have Kubernetes cluster here, right? And this is Jenkins, right? And this is our GitHub, which contains the source code and the YAML manifest files. So first of all, like uh, this will happen, like CI part will be, like, code will be fetched from here. Jenkins will perform CI CD thing, CI part, right? 
after that what is what is going to happen first of all we need to make sure that jenkins has uh, access to cloud and jenkins has access to uh, kubernetes also right these things we need to make sure also we need to make sure jenkins has kubectl right these things once we have then we can manually run the jenkins pipeline to do the deployment of application on kubernetes cluster right now this is our problem statement in order to do the deployment so many challenges we have so we need to install uh, jenkins plugins we need to install kubectl we need to install like we need to configure jenkins to connect to kubernetes we need to configure jenkins to connect to cloud if our kubernetes cluster is on cloud right so so many like third party tools we need to install it's like so many multiple things right so now talking about this is the problem statement now how we can solve this problem statement so uh, as per argo cd first of all let us understand what exactly is argo cd okay so basically argo cd is a cd tool which is specifically used in gitops okay now gitops you know when gitops was started so the first definition that was came was git as single source of truth When I say git as single source of truth, that means uh, everything is going to happen and everything is going to be stored in git. Okay, by this definition, what by this sentence, what exactly do we mean? That our uh, deployment files, files, they are going to be inside git. Okay, as well as the infrastructure, infrastructure uh, files, the files that will be used to create infrastructure that is also be will be inside git okay so it's like the most all all the most important things will be inside git itself right basically it's 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 using iac infrastructure as code keeping everything inside git itself okay so argo cd is a tool that will be used for continuous deployment or delivery we can use that right now the question is how does it solve the problem that we previously have correct so let me explain you what exactly happens first thing let's say uh, let's understand this is our jenkins okay and this is our git repo one which contains the source code right so let's say uh, till this stage if i go above till this stage we are telling or maybe uh, convert uh, convert this as the ci stage okay and this will be deployment species cd okay so like building the application running scan building uh, building the docker image updating the docker uh, image name in our yaml manifest file this we can consider ci okay so that means ki this part will be done by jenkins okay ci part correct and this repository it contains uh, like uh, source code okay and there will be second repository also now the second repository it's it contains the manifest files okay for those who are unable to understand what exactly is manifest files so we you know when we want to deploy an application to kubernetes we have two kinds of main files which is deployment.yaml right service.yaml there could be more but these there could be like uh, c creates config mac and others but these two are the general things right general file so these files we are going to keep in separate repository and once the uh, like building of the application and building of the docker image is completed immediately jenkins is going to update the name of docker image in the manifest files okay this happens and you know as you can uh, as as you remember now you can see that we have not done anything inside jenkins to connect to kubernetes we have not installed kubectl we have see we have not installed uh, kubectl we have not installed we have not added any kind of credentials in jenkins we have not uh, uh, installed aws cli in jenkins right and we have not uh, installed any plugins installed plugins in jenkins right we have not done but separately uh, using infra team with the help of infra team our kubernetes cluster is created okay 
let's say this is like uh, uh, EKS. Okay, this is EKS, and inside this is like on cloud. Okay, this is the Kubernetes cluster. You can say. Okay. Now we want to deploy our application through uh, on here. Okay. And for deployment, the main file that is needed is like deployment.yaml and service.yaml, which is stored inside Git repository 2. Okay. Now, so now in order to do deployment, what we are going to do, we are going to take help from Argo CD. And you know, Argo CD, the best part about Argo CD is it's not installed or it's not set up anywhere else. Instead, Argo CD is set up inside Kubernetes. Now you understand this if Argo CD is inside Kubernetes, we don't need to install any like install any kind of third party plugins or tools within Argo CD for it to connect because it is already inside Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Thirdly, we don't need to provide any kind of credential. We don't need to do anything with respect to this because it is already inside Kubernetes cluster. Now, you know what we will do. So we will give uh, like we will connect Argo CD to the this repository. Because this repository contains the files, manifest files, which is required for deployment. Okay. Now what will happen? We will tell Argo CD every time you see changes in this repository, you need to uh, like deploy the application. Basically, see once first time, let's say we connected our Argo CD to GitHub repository, which contains the manifest files. Okay. So uh, Argo CD was able to find the deployment YAML and service YAML. So using that, what it did, it created the application the application that we want to use it created the application okay now application is created inside kubernetes cluster okay now the best part about argo cd is that let's say again we we created like we ran the job and again we have the uh, docker image new docker image we have okay new docker image we have so with the help of jenkins what did we did inside the deployment yaml file uh, we updated the version of the docker image okay so as soon as we committed some changes in here argo cd will automatically notice okay there are some changes now how does argo cd works so uh, this is our desired state okay because we are updating here, we are keeping the configuration files. So whatever uh, things we write here, that is our desired state. Okay. And this is the current existing state. Current existing state of application. Right. So every time like we update and like Docker image name in our manifest files, what will happen? Argo CD will automatically uh, check for sync. Okay. What, what it's going to check? It's going to check if desired state is equal to uh, existing state or you can see current state of the application so if let's say we have updated a docker image name in our repository to manifest files okay previously the docker image that were being used was version 1 but this time uh, after like building the second time we have created new docker image and new uh, tag is version 2 Okay, so Argo CD will check, okay, this is not correct, right? Current state is version 1 and desired state is version 2. So immediately uh, what Argo CD is going to do is it's going to do the deployment and change the uh, current state also to version 2. That means syncing. Here it's like uh, version is version 2 is being used. So Argo CD will also update the application to use the version 2. Now, both the desired state and current state is going to be in same version, right? And now, the benefit you can see, ki, uh, already I explained that these things uh, we don't need to install. There is no security issue. Why? Because we are not providing any kind of credentials. Already, Argo CD is running inside Kubernetes cluster, right? So, if it is already running inside cluster, it has access to Kubernetes cluster, okay? And also, you know, the benefit, another benefit is that ki we don't need to manually tell every time to Argo CD, ki, okay, kindly uh, do check for uh, files and do the deployment. No, Argo CD will automatically detect if there are any changes, if there are any new commits in our manifest files, it will detect the change, compare the states of the application, desired state is inside the repository files and current state is already in the uh, like the application that is running so if it it matches it won't do any kind of changes if it does not match then it's going to uh, like make sure that desired state is also the current state okay another thing another thing very very security thing i'll tell you uh, let's say 
let's say what we did key we manually log into kubernetes cluster and we ran this command kubectl apply hyphen f and we made some changes okay we made some changes but if you made some changes by manually then again what what is going to happen you know current state changed because we applied manual changes so current state change right but again as soon as uh, cargo cd notices that there is no sync because if current state change and desired state is different what it's going to do it's going to again do the deployment and make sure ki whatever uh, whatever uh, like uh, state is defined in our repository same state is in uh, like this uh, uh, a deployed application okay so argo cd will do this right so it will revert the changes like these changes that we have done manually it will be deleted or removed and you again the uh, whatever things are written in our github yaml files those only be uh, like uh, uh, used for deployment okay now this is like you understand ki first of all uh, how argo cd makes easier things easier right deployment becomes very much easier with help of argo cd right now let's talk about uh, access control because as i say ki okay uh, as i say ki okay here we have like uh, git so multiple team members will be able to access the files inside git repository right so if everyone is doing commit and argo cd is continuously doing deployment it will cause error right so you know how do we manage the access control in this case you know let me explain you that let me quickly uh, create a diagram again okay so this is our repo 1 which contains the source code right and we have jenkins and then we have repo jenkins is supposed to update the image details right and then we have kubernetes cluster and argo cd running inside it which is supposed to deploy the application that we have in our source code okay now as i as we talk about access control next so how like uh, access is managed so that uh, not everyone is able to do deployment okay so let's say i am doing the deployment from master branch okay now in github you have options to set up uh, some setting security setting so that no direct commit is allowed in master branch once again let me make it little bit so no direct commit will be allowed in master branch that means uh, nobody can commit directly into the master branch okay if any new commit needs to be done so what teammates need to do they need to raise pull request okay basically what will happen i'll explain uh, let's say this is master branch okay and some teammates have made some uh, like uh, new features added and they want those changes to be deployed okay so they our teammate has created like feature branch okay now what it's going to do a teammate is a, a want if teammate want his changes to be merge into master branch he is going to raise a pull request okay now changes from feature branch will not be merged to master until unless changes are approved by architect okay there are features i'll show you in a minute so uh, until unless architect approves the changes then only changes will be merged uh, feature branch changes will be merged to master once changes are merged automatically will be these changes will be detected by argo cd and new changes will be deployed by argo cd okay so in this way uh, first of all nobody can directly uh, commit the changes to master branch so like it's not ki everyone is doing the deployment right until unless architect approves the changes then only merge of the different branch will be happening to master if merge is done then only changes will be deployed in this way access control is done in uh, like Ar while we are working with argo cd okay so i hope like uh, uh, this is very much clear let me just explain you go through everything again so let's say we have source code okay we have the source code and first stage is that we will write jenkins pipeline to like uh, uh, compile the application test run test cases of the application sc 
scan like file system scan dependencies right and then we run like sonar analysis when do we do sonar analysis okay then we are building the application building application then we are building docker image okay and finally updating the tag or version of the docker image to the repository too okay these will be are these are like ci so once this task is done then what will happen uh, like uh, let's say some new changes are there okay so like new changes are there either we can directly update if we have access directly we can update or else we do not if we do not have access we can create a new branch make changes in the new branch raise a pull request and once the pull request is approved changes will be merged from new branch to master branch as soon as changes are merged to master branch automatically it will be detected by argo cd and it's going to perform the deployment now uh, you can understand very clearly how beneficial it's like working with argo cd there are there are no security challenges like all the all of those security challenges we have like removed we are not using any third party tools like anything to work with uh, like uh, for the deployment right so this is how argo cd is going to work okay now let us do a proper hands on deployment uh, hands on task so that we can understand and see how exactly argo cd works okay so let's do that also team for those who are looking for devops training sessions so new batch batch 4 is getting started on 10th of march and it covers almost everything uh, syllabus you can find in the description and everything so if you are interested uh, if you if you like the way that i teach and the details to which i go so if you are interested to learn more and be prepared for devops interview then you can enroll to this uh, links will be in the description the cost if you use uh, this coupon the cost will be 6500 and as per the syllabus the cost is very less actually okay so yeah check it out and if you if you are interested you can enroll to this uh, new cl classes will be getting started from 10th of march okay okay team so yeah we are going to create eks cluster okay before that let me show you one through diagrammatic structure what exactly i was talking about so first what we are going to have two repository one will be application source code one will be a yaml manifest files okay using jenkins we are going to perform like compiling the application running test cases scanning the course source code for uh, like scanning file system scanning uh, dependency check right then building the application getting the application artifact and then building the docker image okay once we have the docker image using jenkins we can update the docker image names or version or tags in our repository to yaml manifest files once that is done then as soon as the changes are there automatically those changes will be detected by argo cd because argo cd is will like every time it will keep ch checking if the current state which is the current deployment state is in sync with the desired state desired state is the one which is inside git repo so if there are uh, differences then argo cd quickly fetch the new changes and do the deployment to apply those changes to uh, the application okay so this is how it's going to work okay now let's do the uh, like do hands on thing so first of all what we are going to do is set up eks cluster right elastic kubernetes cluster so for that what i would suggest let's create some roles okay so i have uh, like written uh, small uh, this uh, created uh, document so with respect to this we'll be doing okay first we need to create role right so let us do that so we can click on first of all we need to go to iam okay once you are in iam you can click on create role aws service and here we are going to search for eks okay once you search eks you will find this option so select the second option which is eks cluster click next click next and here let's provide a name so we are going to provide the name as eks dash cluster dash role okay uh, maybe just let me write my that also looks good okay so this will be the first role that will be used for uh, eks cluster okay so we'll click on create role and this role is created right next we are going to create another role second role which we need to create which is uh, ec2 and in add policies we need to uh, add these policies so let's do that again select aws service use case ec2 okay click on next and here we need to search some things some of the policies which we need to use first policy that we are going to use 
is this one. Select it. Second policy which we need to search for is Amazon EKS CNI policy. So that also we are going to search here. Select that as well. Third policy which we need to have is this one. We'll copy this and search it here and select that as well. And last policy which we need to have is Amazon EKS worker note policy because we are going to have worker notes also which we will be using for deployments. Okay. Select that and click on next. Here uh, let's provide the name as my dash uh, node group. Okay, role. This is fine, right? This is fine. We can click on create role. So these two roles, my cluster, uh, my EKS cluster role, my node group role, these two roles we are going to use, right? Next step is to create EKS. So let us do that. So for that, we can go to services and here on search, you can search EKS or Elastic Kubernetes service. I can directly click here. Okay. And let's click on add cluster. Click on create. Let's provide a name as let's say DevOps sec dash EKS. Okay. Uh, let's not make it so long. Shack EKS is fine. Version is 1.29. We are going to go with and cluster role. You can see automatically it fetched because we just created, right? Then we are, we are we don't need to change anything here. Click on next here VPC. So by default, it will be able to fetch. Okay. So the default one that is existing, it will be able to fetch. You can choose this security group. So I'm going to select the security group, which is launch wizard. Why I'm selecting because uh, it has whatever like multiple ports that I need is already open here. So if I go to security group, uh, this is the launch wizard too. If I open it, these are the some ports that are already open. These are some things that I usually use. So in general, this is the these are the some ports that are open in my security group. So I'm using that security group. Okay. Scrolling down. Okay. So here you have this option cluster endpoint access. Either you can select public, the cluster endpoint accessible from outside of your VPC or you can select private or public and private. So I'm just usually I just go with public and private both. Click on next. Then we have metrics. So here also simply click on next. Okay, and click on next again. And yeah, everything seems fine. So click on next. And let's just see everything seems good. Okay, click on create. Now this may take little bit of time because uh, the cluster creation, it, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes. So let's wait for this to get completed. Okay team, seems uh, the cluster has been created, right? Next up, what we need to do is go to compute because uh, Kubernetes cluster we have created, but we have not created worker nodes, right? So for that also we have steps in compute we need to go to uh, select role select so and so okay so compute here we can click on add node group let's provide a name as node grp uh, let's say three any name you can put it's not uh, something and this is the node group uh, uh, ro rule role that we just created right previously and scroll down click on next Okay, and here we need to select EMI type, instance type. So let's select instance type as uh, T2 medium would be good because like uh, two, it, it has two CPU. So it's like enough, right? Okay, and this size 20 or more depends on like how much you need. You can just set it up and here maximum size. I'm going to just change to three so that if needed, a number of nodes can increase up to three. Okay, this is like scaling option. And this is a really useful a, here it's like key desired so by default there will be two worker nodes created okay and minimum worker node that will be having as two okay and maximum if needed if load is more then it will automatically create another worker node so maximum it can create up to three okay and here yeah click on next submit these are already coming by default because we have whatever we used in our previously so those are coming right click next and everything seems fine to me 
click on create so it's going to create the uh, node group inside which we'll be having worker nodes okay and yeah this again will be getting created so it will take little bit of time so let's just be patient and i'll be back once this is created okay so it seems that the cluster is also created as well as the node groups are also created right so we have one node group inside which we have two worker nodes as of now okay and they are in ready status so this is good right next step what we have let us see uh, yeah this till here we have done right next up what we need to do we need to open cloud shell okay so you see this option cloud shell simply open it in a new page so here basically what we can do we can interact with our kubernetes cluster with the you know the benefit of this using cloud shell is that key separately we don't need to create a vm to access it okay since uh, we can use this and through this we can interact with kubernetes cluster that we have created okay and next up what we need to do so next up we need to create the cube config file basically it will make sure that once we have the cube config file we will be easily able to interact with our kubernetes cluster okay okay so the command is aws eks update cube config hyphen hyphen name cluster name so in our case the cluster name is let me check shack eks right so let me copy this and paste it here and region region you can put as per your own so my region is ap dash south which is uh, mumbai location so i will copy this and we are going to go here cloud shell paste here okay okay now once we have run this command so you know i have not installed kubectl but we can still use the commands kubectl get nodes so once i run you can see now we can able to access our cluster and we can able to see that there are two worker nodes available right so this is good next step what we have so next step we have is the commands to install argo cd okay now before we do that let me show you a few things if i go back here if i run the command kubectl get namespaces so by default we are having these namespaces available right so what we are going to do we are going to set up or create argo cd deployment as i mentioned ki argo cd is also going to run inside kubernetes cluster right so in a, in a way we are going to deploy argo cd inside kubernetes cluster how do we do that so usually you know like when we do deployment what we do we use yaml manifest files right same thing here also we are going to do so for argo cd first of all we are going to create a separate namespace okay and i will let me paste the command to create the namespace this will create the namespace and inside this namespace we are going to do the deployment of argo cd so that argo cd component uh, argo cd application will be running inside this namespace okay uh, just to let you know command kubectl apply hyphen n means we are defining our namespace and name of the namespace which is argo cd which we just created right next up the file using which we want to create the resource or do the create the deployment which is uh, in our case it's a github file right yaml file which is on github so i will copy that and paste it here right click so now it's going to create all the resources that is needed for argo cd to be created you can see it's creating lots of resources okay so let me clear the screen okay so these are the components that has been created let me clear the screen again okay now if i run kubectl get all all means like i want to see whatever resources are created where i want to check i want to check in argo cd name namespace okay argo cd okay okay so from here we can see these many pods are created these are like uh, uh, like different pods that are needed for argo cd the, the everyone having different functionalities okay out of which uh, most important one that we are going to use is this one argo cd server so when we want to access the argo cd ui we can use this pod okay scrolling down you can see services are also here available right now one problem that you might be able to see since as i have told you in kubernetes master class that when we want to access an application we are going to access it through service correct and 
service are of different kinds uh, general uh, general kinds we have which is cluster ip node port and ingress right now the problem let me explain you the problem that we we might be facing here give me one second <sighs> yeah okay so as i have told you previously also ki we are going to access when we want to access any application you are going to access it through service like let's say this is our app pod okay and this is the service so the way that we are going to access the application is in this format okay here we, from here we are going to send the request okay now service type is of generally we have like four types which is cluster ip then we have a node port then we have load balancer then we have ingress these are the some general type of general kind of uh, service right so these three service and this one service this is used for uh, internal communication internal communication and using this we can actually access from outside external access can be created for from here okay now the main point of telling you this is that ki uh, as you saw in the uh, in the previously uh, like cloud shell page that all the services are created of type cluster ip that means if you if i want to access the uh, argo cd i cannot access because there is no component created for external access to the uh, application argo cd application right so what we need to do in order to make sure that we are able to access the argo cd application what i am going to do let me explain you so i am going to okay first uh, sorry uh, if i go back if i run this command again as i mentioned ki this is the service which we need to use because this is argo cd server through which we are going to access the argo cd uh, ui okay now it is of type cluster ip correct and cluster ip if it, if it is of type cluster ip i cannot access it right so that means i need to make sure ki that cluster ip instead of cluster ip that service type should be of either of these three if it is node port then also we can access if it is of load balancer type then also we can access from externally if it is of ingress type we can access right so what i am going to do basically is change this cluster ip of service type to load balancer service type okay so for that we have this specific command okay what this is going to do is convert the uh, this cl uh, cluster ip to load balancer okay let me show you okay you can see patching is done if i clear the screen and run the command as kubectl get svc hyphen n for namespace our namespace name is argo cd right click enter now you see suddenly for argo cd server we have service type as load balancer that means now we are able to now we will be able to access the argo cd right so here you can see this is the external uh, ip and this is the uh, url using which we can access so we have the url right let me copy it somewhere first okay and also as i mentioned ki if you if you want to access any website what things you will be needing two things website url and credentials for credential username and password so website url we have now right now next we need username and password so default username is going to be uh, admin okay and admin default username will be admin and we need to have the password right so for getting the password basically a default secret will be getting created inside argo cd namespace right whose name is argo cd initial admin secret so this secret contains the value of password and it is in decoded base 64 sorry it is coded encoded in base 64 so we are going to decode it so if you run this command you will be able to get the uh, password okay so let me paste it okay now here till here this is the password of the argo cd initial okay so let us try to access our argo cd i'll copy this url paste it here and let's see now 
you see it is saying privacy error this is because you know here it is of like https type but it is not having a proper certificate it is having just self signed certificate okay that's why it is saying not secure so what we need to do we need to click on advanced and here you will be seeing the url just click on that and now argo cd page is open right so initial as i said username is going to be admin and password we have just generated here right so we will copy this whole thing and paste it here so click on sign in you can see we have signed in first thing that you should always do go to user info click on update password and create your new password okay so let's let me create i'll just create aritya one two three aritya one two three okay click on save new password now what it's going to do it's going to log you out automatically if i click anywhere else you can see it logged me out so we can now log in using our new password just to confirm if it is working fine okay now so now we have logged in and this is the ui page that you are going to see as soon as you uh, like uh, log into the argo cd page okay and you can see from here we are using a version 2.4.7 okay now let me show you the things that we have so as i mentioned ki what it's going to do argo cd it's going to fetch the uh, information of the yaml manifest files from the repository right so uh, for example let's say this is my repo one which should be containing as of now it's empty only nothing i have written so repo one should be containing by default the application source code which we can build using jenkins okay so and we can like we can build docker image and everything that we can do second thing second so uh, second uh, repository is repo 2 which contains the manifest files which can which contains the deployment and service file okay now this contains a, a, it is a also team uh, i'm using a tetris uh, docker image which i have taken reference from uh, cloud champ youtube channel so you can check that out as well okay now coming back so what i am going to do i need to basically provide this uh, repository url inside our argo cd how we can do we can simply go here repositories and you can see there are multiple options to connect to repository so we are going to go with connect repo using https click here type will be git project will be default repository url so repository url i am going to going to copy this paste here and since my uh, repository is public so we don't need to provide username and token right so simply we can click on connect now if your repository url is correct you can see the status connection status is successful right next up what we need to do click here click on create application now application name we can write as tetris project name default sync policy now this is one excuse me sorry this is very important sync so there are two kind of sync available one is manual one is automatic so if you want that like uh, the changes from repository should be fetched by uh, argo cd uh, like automatically then you can choose automatic if you want it to happen manually like every time you should be the one clicking on this uh, like sync sync but there will be sync button so if you want that you should be the one who should be clicking on sync button in order to like uh, apply the new changes then you can select the manual okay so again let me provide the name as tetris project default sync policy i am going to go with automatic then we have these two options you see pruned resources that means argo cd will delete resources if they are no longer defined in git that means if our if like i have yaml file in my git git repository right so if i delete this folder or delete the yaml files then argo cd what it's going to do it's going to delete the resources also from our our uh, like uh, uh, kubernetes cluster that is one thing secondly self heal so so for example that i was mentioning if someone manually does the deployment using kubectl command then again and it's different from the one defined in our git repository then argo cd will be deleting the or removing the uh, like manual deployment and again doing the deployment that is defined in our repository okay then we have this option uh, auto create names so there are other option but these these are some of the important ones auto create namespace so if we want our application to be uh, running inside specific namespace so instead of going and running the command kubectl create namespace namespace name 
instead of that we can simply click on auto create namespace and if you provide any name it will be getting created okay now here here we need to provide the source source means where our manifest files are stored right and already i have defined the url so this is the url revision head means that it should be taking the uh, it should be taking the latest comment okay the branches so as of now we like see basically uh, we can define either it should be using tags or branches so good option or good option uh, like good choices go with just branches okay path so path basically refers to the specific folder inside which your manifest files exist so my manifest files exist inside this k at manifest folder right so what i need to do i need to just copy this and paste it here so that path is clear okay this is good good right next cluster url so here we need to define which kubernetes cluster we want to deploy right and as as i told you previously it's very interesting that Kuber, uh, argo city is already running in the kubernetes cluster that means this cluster is the default cluster for argo cd because it's already existing inside this right so if i go here you see kubernetes dot default svc that means the default cluster in, uh, inside which argo cd is running will be selected then namespace so if you want any specific namespace to be created because i have we have checked this option right auto create namespace that means whatever name we provide here if that namespace does not exist already argo cd is going to create it for example let's create namespace named tetris okay and yeah that's all we need to do now we can simply click on create okay so if i click here you can see as of now it's like uh, uh, like everything is getting deployed it's just getting started okay so let's wait for few months few minutes because you see here app health it was progressing before and now it's healthy right now this is the app and inside app we have this is the uh, namespace i guess and inside this we have two components service and deployment right inside deployment de using deployment we are creating two pods for this is pod one this is pod two and this is the service okay now if i <coughs> click on details here we can see first of all live manifest files the one that is being used directly because some changes will be added once the like uh, uh, pod or resources is created then we have difference as of now there is no difference because uh, there is no difference actually through the desired state in our repository and the current state right then we have events so events you can see here what happened here uh, first of all ensured load balancer okay so and so okay for service if i go to uh, the spots go to uh, events you can see what it has done it has uh, pulled the docker image this one and used that docker image to do the deployment right then we have logs so these are the logs that we can see okay these are some specific features right now in order to access the application we can click on service and click on details and we can you can see since i was using if i open this sorry my mistake if i open this service yaml file you can see type we have used load balancer correct so if load balancer type is there then as i mentioned load balancer type it, it will help you to get an external access right from so this is the url using which we can access the application if i copy this paste it here let's see if our application is running or not it may take few minutes to get up and running okay so yeah you can see it's running so if i click space so it has like running we can play and so and so whatever okay right so it is running right that is one thing you can see like here we can see the details correct now uh, you can see succeeded two minutes ago that means two minutes ago deployment was done if i simply click refresh no changes right now let's talk about when i was talking about like a uh, access control right so let's say i have set up that nobody can commit changes to main branch correct so let's say what i'm going to do click on let's create new branch feature let's say some developer is there who wanted to add some new feature to the application and since no direct commit is allowed to the main branch that is for security reasons so what he's going to do he's going to create his own branch named feature something and he's going to apply some changes inside the these files okay let's say open so currently i'm using a docker image of version one right so what i can do 
I can go here. You can see I have three versions of images, right? Version one, version two, version three. Okay. Docker images, three Docker images I have. So let's say what I did, I changed the tag of. If I go back here, edit. I change the tag to version two. Commit changes. Okay. This is done, right? Next up, basically in companies, what happened? We uh, raise a pull request. Okay, and we will like merge from feature to base, a uh, main branch. Okay, here we will write key uh, new changes have been added. Okay, new changes have been added, and now we can click on create pull request. So what what is going to happen is like uh, pull request is raised, right? Now this pull request will be assigned to some specific person like architect. Okay, now th that architect is going to view the changes, what changes have been done by the user or developer. And if architect is okay, okay, these changes are correct. We can uh, like use these changes for deployment. So he's going to click on merge pull, uh, like merge the pull request. Okay, now if I go back to repository, so the main branch will be having version two, right? So it is like new new Docker image right there, right? And here you can see if I re just refresh the page, you see succeeded a few seconds ago. Okay, succeeded few seconds ago because now we are going to what is happening you, here. You can see we are using these are the new deployments. These are new deployments that happened with the new Docker image. You can see how many seconds does it took? Does it did it take? Right, just few seconds. Okay, it just took few seconds and new deployments have been done. And now again, if I refresh the page, let's see. Yeah, new, it's like new changes have been added to our ap application. Okay, so that is very interesting. And this is how Kubernetes, uh, this Argo CD works basically. It can, you can easily like uh, uh, apply the changes from your, uh, whatever you have defined in our your, uh, repository. Okay, now. See, uh, I'm not showing the CI part because CI part we have like covered every in almost every video. So just for knowledge, now you understand. Okay, okay separately we can have as two repositories, right? Repo one, which will contain the source code. Repo two, which is going to contain the YAML manifest files, which is needed for the deployment of the application. Okay, so if I need to up, uh, up, uh, like uh, apply any new uh, uh, changes or deploy any new changes to the application, I can simply make changes. To this repository and also as I mentioned ki we are not supposed to make changes directly to the main branch instead uh, developers or whoever want some new changes is going to create a new branch add their changes there raise a pull request that pull request will be up once it is approved and it will be merged to main branch then changes will be deployed okay this is how things work and now you can see ki how easy deployment becomes when you are working with Argo CD Okay, and you know uh, it's it's like it's not we can add multiple repositories. We can simply click on connect here, and you can provide repository details, and you can add. Okay, but yeah, now I believe like it should be very much easier for you to work, right? And uh, here you can see the status also. Okay, what is the app health? Uh, like if app is running fine or not, like that, right? And we can delete the previous one. Okay, and okay. This is good, right? So in this way, you can use Argo CD and I hope this video was useful. It helped you learn what exactly is Argo CD. Why do we need it, right? And also, you know, uh, it's very much easier for doing rollback. Like if you want to apply changes to uh, like previous versions. Okay, let's see if we can. You know, uh, if, if I want to apply some changes, what I need to do, I need to simply do we have any option specific option to roll back not sure okay so let's say i want to roll back so what i need to do i am aware about the previous version of docker image i can simply go here right click on edit i can change the version to version 1 commit changes okay going back here i just refresh the page and it's going to immediately it's going to do the deployment okay now we can remove this uh, previous existing one okay and you can see here okay these are like now we have rolled back to previous version 
you can see how easy it becomes you know i directly changed the version but basically once you have the commit details history once you have the history so you can check out also ki, okay what was the uh, previous version once you have the information about previous version we can make changes and then you can simply refresh to apply the new changes okay and deployment will be still working fine okay you can see it's working fine right so yes team uh, i hope this video was useful for you to learn all the steps that i have used you can just refer the video as well and side by side you can also uh, follow this i'll share with you this okay one more thing team let me tell you so this is like we are doing everything from ui right but we have this option uh, like we can use argo C uh, cli also let me show you uh, let me show you some basic things if i go back to cloud shell let me clear the screen sorry paste here okay one second let me install this and we need to change permissions If I run command argo cd, you see argo cd command is now acceptable. Okay. If I run command argo cd login. So argo, we need to provide argo cd login and the URL. URL we have till this one. Right. So I will just copy this and let me show you. See, since it is like uh, it's like uh, like self signed on certificate, so it is giving this. Okay, we can simply uh, press Y, click enter. It will ask for a username. For us, username is admin. Password is Aditya two three, right? Okay. Now basically, what we can do, for example, let's say if I run Argo CD app list. You can see as of now we are having one app which is tetris okay and let's say uh, let's see how many you know with one argo cd you can connect multiple clusters also if i run this command argo cd cluster list you can see just one cluster is connected as of now okay basically uh, the purpose of argo cd cli is that let's say if you don't want to use uh, like ui so you can do deployment and everything from using cli also right you simply need to run the command argo cd login the url of the uh, argo cd which is deployed and then you can log in and then you can run argo cd cli commands to check the deployment do the deployment and anything else okay but usually as you can see it's like much easier to work with uh, argo cd ui in my opinion ui is much better okay because it's like very user friendly and it's like uh, well created so yes team uh, that's all about this video i hope this video was useful you got to learn something okay and yeah make sure to check out the links in the description about the course if you are interested you can enroll okay so yeah that will be all for today and thanks for watching have a nice day team